So what's up dude? How did that date go last night? I think it went really well actually. We clicked right from the get go. We watched a movie, we caught up for dinner, and then we held hands. So, when do I get to meet this lucky person? Oh, I brought them with me today. Oh really? Where? I'm really in love with this two player board game. And then we held hands. And Then We Held Hands is a fully cooperative abstract board game for two players where players try to restore their broken relationship by becoming in sync with each other's thoughts, perspectives and emotions. And Then We Held Hands is a game designed by David Chirkop, Yannick Massa, published by Ludi Creations. It's for two players, lasts for about 30 minutes and is a cooperative abstract game. The objective of the game is essentially for players to move their beads from coloured node to coloured node, uh, completing objectives from the objective card deck as they go. There are 24 objective cards all together, each corresponding to a different ring, starting with the outer ring, inner ring, and the innermost ring, and players win the game if they enter the inner circle on consecutive player turns. In order for players to move their bead around the circle, they need to move their bead from colored node to colored node. So for example, this bead, if it were to move to the red node, they would need to discard this card here with the red bar on this side. Now because my bead is on the left-hand side of the board, we only look at the left-hand side of the card, not the right hand side of the card. Because the card I discarded was a red card, I then moved this balance bead to the red side of the board. And you can see this side's got a blue and a green symbol. That side has a black and a red symbol, which represents negative emotions. These represent positive emotions. It's really important that you try and end your turn on zero because then you're able to draw all the cards back up to your full hand again. If you don't end on zero, you're stuck with the cards that you and your partner have in front of them. Each card represents a complex emotion and usually feature two bands of colors on either side. Now if a player's bead ends up in the middle of the circle, players then can choose to keep the perspective that they currently have or put their cards like this and change the perspective by shifting them to the other band on the other side. It's always really interesting to see things from a completely different perspective. If a player doesn't have the required card that they need to move to an adjacent space, they can use cards not only from their emotional row, but from their partner's emotion row. Players need to be careful when they do this, because if their partner becomes off balance, and they become off balance, they might find themselves unable to draw extra emotion cards. So essentially, players work in tandem to try and complete the objectives and move into the center of the board and thereby reaching their goal. Essentially, this game is played in total silence, or players can choose to engage in everyday conversation, but they're not allowed to talk about the actual gameplay themselves. I'm gonna channel my inner X-Men and see if I can read your mind with telepathy. It does come down to player intuition and the knowledge and trust of the other person that will hopefully ensure that players succeed. If at any time, the emotion deck runs out, players can't move because they don't have the right emotion cards, or one of the players is forced to move less than two, or more than two, then the game immediately ends. So do players even get to hold hands in this game? Well no actually, I think the game is a metaphor for repairing one's relationship and that we should actually be spending more time focusing our energy on each other's thoughts and feelings. One of the highlights I like to mention about the game is that this game really brings out the completionist in you. Every time you fail at the game and you see how close you get to the final goal, you really want to set this game back up and really give it another crack and you want to keep doing it until you actually win. So it really is quite motivational in the fact that it is a puzzle that you do want to complete and the fact that you do it with someone else is really also quite a really great experience. It's very small, it's very light, the rules are very easy to teach and it's very easy to set up and it's low 
cost point, it is um, a very easy pick up uh, along with any other big board game you might be getting at your board game store. What I really like is this concept of perspective changing. When you're on the left hand side of the board, your cards slide to the left. And if you're on the right, they slide to the right. And the fact that you're playing using different edges of the cards, the game has a logical flow to it. So you can kind of plan in your mind uh, based on what you see your partner do and plan your decision and how you're going to move using the available choices that you have left. It is a very interesting concept and theme, one that I actually haven't really seen before, but I really like how that the game has two sides to it and one side is for colorblind players because it's got little shapes and symbols in it and the other side is just for regular people but you can play with either side it's fine i like how the artwork is by dixit artist marie cardo and the fact that her art has a very minimalist theme in this game kind of fits the abstract nature of it i like how that uh, when you play this game, you really have to know who you're playing with and how they play as a gamer because preempting and observing how they play really gains you an insight into what they're thinking because you're not allowed to communicate with each other whatsoever in this game if you're choosing to play the silent variant. So, lots of really great uh, thoughts there. This game has lots of different modes of difficulty, so if you're playing one of the argumentative modes, these uh, grey bands on the side of the objective cards means that players need to end their move on that colour in consecutive turns. So that really adds for a higher level of challenge and I think you get so much out of this game for its very small and slim box. A limitation that I like to mention is the fact that this game would probably have a very limited audience. There are people who are in two minds about whether they like cooperative games or not and also the added element of the fact that it is an abstract game can kind of deter people a little bit. I personally love both abstract and cooperative board games and the fact that they're combined together in this really uniquely interesting package is something that really appeals to me. I really like how designers can push the envelope and experiment with different mechanics, experiment with different combinations, and especially with the perspective card player. I like how that's a different way of using a card management system in a game. I love picking up these sorts of left of field games that really challenge the way I think about board games in general. The other thing is that you've got this beautiful card art by Marie Cadeau, and the way you play the cards, they're all kind of stacked up on top of each other. You don't actually get to see the full beauty of some of the artwork that's in there. So what I recommend is when people are playing the game, they should spread the cards out a little bit more so players can get a glimpse of some of the cool artwork. For example, in uh, this Betrayed artwork, you can see there's a vase, but then in the shadow in the background, it's actually a bomb. So you can see that there's a lot of uh, intricate details that kind of don't get to flourish in the game and they kind of get lost in the functioning part of the gameplay. The theme of the game kind of contradicts itself a little bit with the gameplay. You're not allowed to speak to each other, yet that in a real world sense, it's not really the best way to resolve an issue that you have with someone. So I find that aspect of it uh, quite strange. I can understand that the game is quite zen and gives this meditative feel, which it really does very well. But, you know, if you want to resolve an issue, sometimes it's best to talk to someone. So, like, not talking to your partner is a really good strategy for resolving arguments and getting to know them a little bit better. Uh, on the first time I played this game, there's one rule that I didn't find was uh, very clear, and I had to look this up, and there is an FAQ for this game on Board Game Geek. I played it with the idea that every time it was your turn, you had to complete an object, but actually, you don't. You can just move your bead around, play your cards, and not actually have to complete the objective on your turn. So in considering my final verdict, you should definitely get this game if you love left of field games. It's definitely a cheap game that you can put to your filler collection. Really fun, tight, world oil gameplay, one that motivates you to keep playing until you've completed it. Definitely thumbs up in my books. Uh, thank you for joining me for another board game review at Board Game Sanctuary. This is Denny signing out. If you like my videos, please subscribe and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye.